thanks again for watching another one of our videos. If you haven't figured it out yet, we're trying to put out a new video every single Monday morning at 9 o'clock. So, if you can't remember that, hit the subscribe button here below. Uh, it'll let you know when our videos come out. We're trying to put out some good content. Just slowly warming up. Today, uh, we heard the birds chirping, and when I walked my son to school in the morning, he said, it feels like spring dead. And yes, it feels like spring. It's getting close. So today, our topic that we're going to talk about is the top five flies for fishing for stock trout. So before we get going, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. We're putting out these videos at 9 o'clock every Monday. If you happen to forget that, that subscribe button will let you know when our videos come out. Like the channel, uh, like the videos, and then throw a comment below. Um, so all your comments have been great. We're uh, looking at a couple videos from your suggestions and a couple other tweaks here and there. And then we've got some fun stuff once we can head outside. Finally hit above like 30 degrees today. Um, but anyways, to this video. So today is the top five flies for fishing for stocked trout. So some of you guys are lucky. You're in places around the country where you've got wild fish everywhere. Um, but there's also a lot of places all across the country that have stocked fish. And these fish react a little bit differently being brand new to a waterway, whether it's a stream, a river, a lake, a pond, whatever. So we're going to talk about um, some of those uh, flies that you're going to need, and we're going to go over these five flies right here. We'll have links below, um, and we're going to go over these one by one and why I think they work best, and then uh, hopefully you guys can pick a couple of them up. And if you do want to pick them up for the next two days, so today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, so actually three full days, if you use the word flies, F-L-I-E-S, on the website, you get 15% off of all the flies that we have. Um, we've added a bunch more. We're still working on uploading some pictures, um, and we have a lot more coming uh, for springtime as well. We put a big order in for about 30,000 flies, so we have a few new patterns coming out as well for uh, springtime fishing. Uh, we're also working on adding some saltwater flies um, and a handful of other uh, new patterns that will hold the site here very quickly. So check it all out. Load up your boxes. Grab one of our great boxes like this uh, medium silicone box and throw the flies in there, say 15% of food flies at checkout, just for the next three days, including today. Um, so let's move forward. So the first fly that we're gonna put on there, as you can see, these aren't groundbreaking flies, and we'll also throw some pictures up for you, is an egg fly. Um, I'm partial to a cream-colored egg, orange egg, pink egg. Um, they all seem to work, but especially rainbows. For whatever reason, rainbows love egg patterns. So if you have Rainbows being stocked in any of your local waterways. Um, egg patterns seem to work great for them. Um, I think they, you know, when these fish are used to eating pellets, you know, basically dog food um, as they're being fed in there. Um, and egg flies just seem to drift kind of naturally through there. They're a bigger meal. And rainbows, for whatever reason, seem to like egg patterns more than some of the other species out there. So if you have rainbows especially, check out an egg pattern. Next is the ever popular worm, whether it's a squirmy worm, a San Juan, any sort of other worm pattern that's out there. Um, these fish, some of them are raised in dirt uh, um, areas in the hatchery, some are in cement raceways, um, but worms always seem to find their way in there. Um, so worm is a, you know, another one of those patterns that kind of drifts very naturally. Um, and a good worm pattern can go a long way in catching uh, a decent amount of stockfish when they're fresh in the system. Um, yes, we're going to continue with the junk flies. Go with a mop fly. People think mops are just, you know, an absolute junk fly. I like this tan color, the brown color in particular, because I think they really imitate crane fly larvae. So if you know what a crane fly looks like, um, a rather long legged bug. Uh, that hatches on a lot of trout streams all across the country, but the larva form are very large. They're actually pretty close to what this moth is, um, and they come out as a creamy brown color in a couple of different stages out there. Also, there's a lot of grubs, um, and grubs are this creamy color, and I feel like uh, those are in a lot of the um, ground around uh, trout streams. They get into the water, they get into the raceways. These fish are used to seeing things similar to this, um, and it's a good big meal for them. Sometimes they don't know what to eat. You know, I've seen them hit cigarette butts and uh, have rocks in their stomach when I've cleaned a, a rare fish or two. Um, but uh, sometimes a big meal goes a long way. On that note, conehead woolly bugger. Uh, if I was stuck with one fly for the rest of my life for every species in the known universe, it would be this. It imitates a lot of things. There's a lot of ways to be able to fish it. 
you can dead drift it, you can strip it, you can swing it. Um, when I'm tying them, I actually like to shorten the tail because a lot of times when you're swinging or stripping up a fly for freshly stocked fish, a lot of times they come at it with a, you know, especially if there's a few in the pool or the area you're fishing, they chase after it and they nip at the tail. So sometimes I'll either tie the tail short or I'll take the tail and instead of putting it all the way at the bend, I'll actually take it about a quarter of the way um, up the shank of the hook. So I've got more hook exposed um, into the tail and get some more hookups on some of those short strikes that seem to happen, especially on freshly stocked fish. So we've gone through four of the five. The last one is a good old tried and true pheasant tail. I like a pheasant tail because uh, it just is a great imitator of a lot of bugs in the system. So yes, they might have been stocked a week ago or even that day or a month ago, um, but they're going to start to see a lot of the natural food sources that are in the water. And a pheasant tail is just a good overall um, imitation of a lot of those things. So the nice thing about the pheasant tail pattern in general is you can tie it a bunch of different ways. You can tie it unweighted, you can tie it with a bead head, you can tie it on a jig hook with tungsten to get it down deeper. You can tie them in different colors. You can put flashbacks on them. Um, so when you look at a pheasant tail, it's very versatile. I'm going to tie them in a bunch of different weights and a bunch of different sizes as, too, as well. So this is, I believe, a size 10 and a bead head. Um, but I'll tie them down to 18s and 20s at times, too. Um, so earlier in the season, um, a lot of those bugs are smaller. So you've got to realize that those bugs are hatching in April and May and June, um, and they might be a 14 when they hatch. Right now, two, three months earlier, they might be an 18 and a 20. So sometimes smaller flies will work better, um, as well as all the other flies here. So overall, we've got some attractor patterns or junk flies. We've got, uh, I love fishing streamers in a lot of different ways for freshly stocked fish. Um, especially for kids. So I've got four little kids from ages four to ten right now um, and I like putting streamers on for them because there's kind of no wrong way to do it. They might not take it but if you have a bad cast on a drag fly and it drags everywhere the fish aren't taking it. If you have a bad cast on a, on a streamer like a woolly bugger and it swings through the current, it dead drifts, you retrieve it, there's all kinds of great ways to fish them and there's almost no wrong way to do it. So uh, you can catch fish um, even if you might make a mistake and have a bad cast or a bad uh, presentation there. Um, just because, you know, they might be taking a live bait fish, something that's wounded, um, anything like that. So it really imitates a lot of great things. So, um, you know, probably my high mark on all stockfish is a good old fashioned woolly bugger. My favorite colors are olive, black, and white um, in all streamers. Sometimes you're um, you know, your fancy colors like pinks and chartreuses and oranges and things like that can help, um, but I really like to stay to those natural colors. So, overall, there's our top five flies for fishing for stocked trout. Yes, I said that correctly every time here on that tongue twister. Um, check them out on our website. We've got links below to all five of these flies that are available on our website. Um, and then make sure that you put the code FLIES, F-L-I-E-S, on the checkout for 15% off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. Thank you guys for watching today. We hope you've enjoyed these videos. We've got some new stuff coming out here very soon. Um, we're also working on some new camera equipment. Just got signed up with uh, DJI, so we've got some drones, some other action cameras coming out, so that we will uh, do some fun stuff uh, with this channel. And if you guys are interested in any of that, we are just selling it here in the shop, but we can definitely help you guys out um, over you know, any specific orders that you're looking for for their products. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoy your week. And we'll see you next week, Monday morning, 9 o'clock, for another great video. Have a great day.